Etienne, welcome to the show. Thanks, Rick. Been looking forward to doing this with you. Your very first CIO 100 of the, I guess, what, what's your role? The new head of events at IDG? Yeah, so um, I have the privilege of uh, representing uh, the monetization arm of our 900 events that we do around the year, every year. It's 900? About 900, yeah. Does that include IDC and Foundry? Correct. Okay. Right, which is a big impetus of uh, why I've come join the organization, because we've been typically two separate, if you will, uh, experiences and events, um, right? IDC playing to their strengths around research and data. Um, and then obviously on the Foundry side, more of the media community, the journalists, you know, talking about the tools and the tactics and the behaviors uh, around making enterprise IT decisions. So now what we've done is we've formalized bringing those content pillars um, and our expertise together. Um, yeah. So like what you'll see here uh, with today's sessions and then tomorrow, a nice mix. Uh, of the two, and that's going to be our go-to-market strategy for not only the rest of this year, but going forward. Uh, and that has a lot to do with the feedback we've gotten from our, uh, we've received from our events, because these men and women that come here, right, they're investing their time and energy too, and it has to be tangible, where they're getting empowered in a contextually relevant environment to make those buying decisions with confidence. Yeah. Um, and now more than ever, I mean, I think our latest research says there's over 28 people in a company, particularly across the C-suite, that are involved in these major IT decisions. So it's not getting a couple of people together, yeah. right? It's actually getting a consortium together and understanding the real investment, but then the real benefits of the technology, but then the accountability once it's deployed. Yeah, I mean, I know from, from my perspective, working on the Foundry side for the past, God, almost 15 years now, um, you know, a lot of the customers I've worked with also work with IDC. Right, and so you know, over the past you know year to two years, we've really come together, IDC and Foundry, to to help our customers reach that full buying team. It's great to see that in action here in an event with with live people come yeah. together. So I'd love to get your perspective. I mean, how, well, first of all, how long have you been at IDG now? Uh, a whopping ninety days. Ninety days. Yes. Big our big CIO one hundred symposium and awards. What's your first thoughts of it? Uh, it it's impressive. I mean, the the amount of coordination collaboration, so the events team is on point. Um, seeing the attendees, we had the welcome reception last night, you could just see them connecting already, right? A lot of them, they circle this on their respective calendars. It's a go-to place, um, but they're also looking forward to seeing a lot of their colleagues um, and kind of sharing the, the stories and the trials of tribul and tribulations of making major IT decisions. Um, so the venue is incredible. Uh, first time at the Broadmoor as it's well. It's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can have any type of experience you want, right? Whether it's golf, fly yeah. fishing, hiking, just walking around. And it's just neat to see how we are, right? kind of in a business setting, but also people relaxing, rest, you know, resting their shoulders a little yeah. bit or relaxing their shoulders rather. Um, so yeah, it's a, just an, a really interesting dynamic, but <clears throat> we're here and like you just, you feel like you're at the CIO summit, but then you walk around the grounds and people are in a completely different mindset. It's a little personal tangent uh, for my own on the road story. So growing up as a kid, I, I went on a lot of uh, business trips with my dad. That was like my, my favorite thing to do. And I, you know, been traveling a lot, had kids, my oldest is seven. I've never really gotten the opportunity to take them with me anywhere because yeah. I have three kids. You know, to take them on a quick business trip, five tickets, I mean, it gets expensive quickly. Um, but I live in Golden, I only live about an hour and a half, two hours away, so I actually brought my family with me on this oh, trip. Oh, nice. So very first business trip, so, you know, we're in here today meeting with CIOs, doing our thing, and they're out at the pool, and I gotta say, the Broadmoor pool has some of the best water slides at a hotel I've ever stayed at. I, I walked by that uh, the other day, yeah. No, it looks pretty impressive. Well, that's great. Yeah. I mean, that's, Ultimately, what we do, right? We like we work hard, but we do it on behalf of our, you know, our friends, our family, so you can enjoy, you know, incredible times like that. Because that's ultimately what they remember. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to ask a couple personal things about you, and sure. then I, I want to get in your your backstory because, you know, I, some of the things that you've brought to the table, I think, are refreshing and new for us here at Foundry, and, and I'm really excited to where that's going to go. And I think some of that has to do with with your work history and your journey. But first, a, a quick lightning round so people can get to know you a little bit sure. better. So couple rapid fire questions here. Best concert you've ever been to? Best concert I've ever been to, hands down, is U2. Oh yeah? Yeah, I've uh, gone to a number of their concerts, just huge fan. Um, where? That, where? <clears throat> so Joshua Tree, 
That, like, that was epic. Wow. Um, yeah. And then um, in Boston. Yeah. Uh, so you've in, been to a couple. In New York. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know, there's deadheads. Yeah. I'm the equivalent when it comes to, uh, to you two. So yeah, big, big music fan of you two. All right, when you, when you travel for work, backpack, laptop bag, or other? Uh, backpack. Okay. That has the laptop bag yeah. in it. Um, yeah, I travel with that thing. It's, it's religious. I, I get uh, ridiculed by some colleagues sometimes. They're just like, <laughs> are you going on an overnight? Um, but at the same time, it has every charger you could ever think of, you know, pens oh, it, that clients that, that does forget. look like a hiking backpack. Yeah, too. so but it's a very comfortable one. I love it. All right, coffee drink of choice. So I don't drink coffee. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, uh, you know, it, morning my, morning drink of choice. Morning drink of choice, just nice ice water. I'll hit a Starbucks, yeah. you know, a little mocha frappuccino light every once in a while. Okay, but right. uh, yeah, my uh, my French mother still doesn't believe to this day why I don't drink coffee, but I just, I never got into oh, it. Oh, interesting. But yeah. my wife does and my kids do, so they've... No tea or, or strong European yeah, espresso? Yeah, no, I, I'm just, a, I wake up early, I'm a self-starter. I think it's the uh, the former, you know, baseball player in yeah. me. I'm just... Hydrate. I'm, I'm ready to go, hydrate. Yep. All right, last question. Best Halloween costume you've ever worn? My goodness. I can tell you the worst, but... Uh, that we'll might be the best, I we'll don't know. We'll save that. My mother dressed me up as a cat. Yeah. Um, and I was way too old to like be dressed up. Like a black cat. Yeah, um, <laughs> way too old. I think I was like 10 years old. Yeah, that was my, my when my daughter was four, that was her costume. Yeah, I'm still mortified and, and obviously have uh, PTSD because of that. Whiskers and everything. The, oh yeah. yeah, and of course with the last name, I was like, really? <laughs> uh, but it was a theme, yeah. uh, you know, it was a family and friends, everyone came over and so, we went all out, but Love yeah, it. my mom and dad and I, we were, uh, we were the cats family, Okay, literally. No, no more opening old wounds. We'll, we'll get back to business here. So again, you know, I, you and I just spent some time at our leadership offsite last week and just hearing your ideas of how we incorporate events in our media strategy with events was, was fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're bringing new ideas to Foundry that we're going to be able to take to our customers. So I want to go back because you, you've, you've spent time at CS, CNBC. Wall Street Journal. So I'd love to hear a little bit about your journey and kind of what you picked up along the way that you're now applying to us here at IDG. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've always been and enjoyed running, you know, sales teams. I just really believe in the power of advertising. And then I think the experiential component of it really brings it together, right? It is a tangible uh, experience. So yeah, I had the privilege of uh, starting out um, in the event space, building the Wall Street Journal uh, executive conferences business with a bunch of colleagues and editorial uh, buy-in. So yeah, we launched that back in 08, um, and it's still alive and well today, hmm. uh, meeting a lot of the information needs of particularly the C-suite, um, which I think we have an opportunity to do something along those lines You know, here. We have a CIO executive council, which makes sense. Um, but as I noted earlier, with so many more people involved in the decision-making, you know, CFOs care about enterprise IT and what's on the horizon. CEOs are oftentimes the final decision maker, right? Right, um, and, and enhancing and empowering the people around them, um, and particularly the CIOs and the and the chief security officers, chief data officers. Now there's a chief and you know, AI officer. So I think we have the opportunity to kind of start really expanding. Um, who we attract. We're obviously known for CIO 100, for CSO, and it's not just here in the U.S., it's around the world, right? Mm -hmm. We're doing about 100, 125 of these caliber of events uh, everywhere. So I think that's where the opportunity is. Um, you know, my most recent post uh, at CNBC was really interesting because we were leveraging you know, our on-air talent. Um, and they were really kind of the, the headliners, right? And it was more of a, a show. It's definitely part of the experience, right? Yeah, part exactly. And I, I think there are elements editorially um, that we're going to be doing here. Um, so we have some, you know, the f former uh, winner uh, of the women's Olympic team is going to be speaking, you know, Christine Rampone tomorrow night. She's hosting the wow. gala. So I think we're, we're making strides in that direction. Again, it goes back to... You know, it's not an IDC event anymore. It's not a Foundry event anymore. I mean, they're literally not only co-branded, but the content is is being mixed together. So we're going now out in the marketplaces. These are IDG events, yeah. right? It's to really maximize the impact in the in the portfolio we have. And I think that's a fundamental difference from where I've been, right? We've had more of a journalism newsroom point of view or a on-air television point of view. Yeah. This, I think, our opportunity is we can kind of bring together that technology expertise, but be a bit more overt and, and create a little bit more buzz around it and who's here. Um, so we've got some great ideas editorially. We're working on our 
2025 calendar, you know, as we speak, we should be getting that out in the next couple of weeks. And I love just the IDG messaging, because I know with the customers I've worked with over the years, they say, I don't care, yes, you're founder, you're IDC, but I see you as IDG, and I want to work with IDG. So right. it, it, from a customer standpoint, like this is, I see as a very welcomed opportunity of bringing these two together from a cohesive strategy standpoint. Well, it, that's exactly it. And I mean, we have the ability, you know, I think it, I break it down in kind of my head is like, where's the subject matter expertise yeah. and how can we deploy that best, right? And so for IDC, it's data and research, you know, for Foundry, it's the media, the advertising, the lead gen, and then the event side is the experiential, right? Making it tangible, bringing people together in person, um, or even virtually, right? The digital screen is still a powerful one. Yeah. Um, but I think what separates us from a lot of the other events out there um, is just our, our expertise. And then bringing together that data and research and then the media and the lead gen all into an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we can do a, a better job kind of as we go to market with that, right? Is what does that look like? How do I participate? Um, and then I think we get to a place where, you know, we have, as we have attendees, like they circle this on their calendars. I think we're getting to that place, you know, with um, with partners, because they're sending their CIOs, right? They're the CIO is actually doing the main stage session or the brand strategy session, and I think that's again another growth area. We can get the CIOs, we can get the CSOs, everyone in the tech space, but how do we start attracting more of those CEOs and those CFOs? Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, they're the ones that need to be aligned to, you know, get that ultimate sign off. How do we how do we align the the bringing together the editorial you know mission of Foundry and CIO with the analyst content? How do those two work together in an event to benefit the audience? Yeah, so I mean, I mean, today's a good example. I mean, there's a lot of IDC you know analysts speaking, um, and I think setting the tone for what's on the horizon or what's around the corner that people aren't thinking about and and should be thinking about. Um, so that was a very strategic kind of editorial direction. Um, and then I think tomorrow you'll see more of the CIO panels. You'll have the peer-to-peer -peer conversations. There's case studies. Um, so what they're actually doing yeah, with the technology. E exactly, yeah. and then it, it's getting back to you know the tangible side of it, right? Technology is so disruptive. It's incredible based upon how you know innovative it is. But then what do you actually do? Like yeah. what, again, the tools, and the tactics and the behaviors, because all three of those have to be really clear before you're going to sign a you know seven million dollar you know contract yeah. with you know a premier you know technology provider. Um, we also do I think do a strong job of bringing in then the partners, right? Whether that's a consulting group um, that can help with the assessment of your needs, and then on the back end of then the fulfillment. Um, yeah. So we have a lot of sponsors. We have about 25 sponsors here uh, over these next three days that that is their forte. Like they understand their role in the buying decision making. And so they're partnering with, whether it's on the front end or the back end. Yeah. So that's the other part that I think we can do a lot more from a, a content perspective of, you know, events aren't just two or three days, right? There aren't moments in time. There's a content arc that frankly, you know, starts two, three weeks in advance of, of every event. Um, and I think we're going to start doing a better job, you know, positioning that, right? So take, for example, a lot of preparation that we do with sponsors to make sure their on-stage experience is not only impactful, but it has to be attendee rich, right? No one wants an infomercial. Yeah. So we've been spending a lot of time on the front end getting the, you know, CIOs prepared so they understand the fabric of the rest of the conversations that are taking place, the caliber of attendees and what their expectations are, and then how they can really stand out. That's all great, but that's stuff we can start teasing out weeks in advance, right? And they can buy a media schedule on Foundry and have that targeted capability, not only to the attendees, but you know, there's tens of thousands of other enterprise IT decision makers that aren't here, right? And so what does that look like? And you get that out there. And then you come here, and then you can shoot some of that content as well and have them kind of capture with the sponsor executives What's the essence? What are the key takeaways? And then you wrap that around into what were those you know, key behaviors and then how is that empowering and enabling the decisions? And then, oh, by the way, XYZ company can help you, you know, reach that goal, mm -hmm. but ultimately shorten the process um, because these are still you know, taking months and months of implementation after months of analysis, right? And so that's what we're trying to do from an experiential standpoint is get the right people in the room or an incredible venue like this in the right mindset. 
right? And then they're looking towards our partners as that actionable next step. So they don't have to wonder anymore how this is gonna work. They can really start focusing on, okay, this is how we're going, we are going to make it work. Yeah, it's, it's funny, because I know you mentioned experiential earlier, and I was trying to connect the dots with like, what does this mean for the marketer? And now as you walk through the content arc of what this experience is from a digital te- you know, leading up to the event, capturing the content at the event through the experience, and then tailing it off with more digital in the back end, which also can include more events. Right. That starts to make a lot of, lot of sense. Do you, do you see sponsors doing this currently, or is this something that we're going to start helping and coaching sponsors are doing in the future? Yeah, it's definitely the latter. I mean, I think that was one of the biggest things I've seen in, in my first 90 days. It's like, across IDG, we have an incredible amount of ingredients, right? We just need to fundamentally remix them a bit yeah. and then package them in a way. Um, so we've talked about doing this to clients and the reaction is great. Show me how yeah. and, and tell me what number it is so I can budget it accordingly. Um, so I think, again, that muscle is there. The ingredients are there. We just haven't gone uh, you know, on a consistent, you know, consistent basis. So no, we- that makes sense to me because I've, I've had the question asked, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing media with you. I'm doing leads with you. I'm doing events with you. How do I connect these things in a cohesive strategy to not only get more bang for my buck, but to be more effective in, in yep. what I'm trying to achieve? Well, it's been interesting also because a lot of partners that we work with, right, they'll sign up for this because it's a three-day experience it's a you know flagship same thing for chief security officers that we're going to be doing in october and then they kind of think of the virtual roundtables or the curated dinners that we can do um you know for sponsors as an and and so i think part of what our strategy is for the rest of this year but absolutely for 2025 is let's start the conversation there Right, sure, you might have a couple of tent pole events, and this is not just in North America, it's literally around the world. Like, let's plan out the year together, right? Yeah. What executives and what product solutions are important to you? And how can we amplify the executive's visibility? Do that not only here on site, but through the content arc that we just talked about. But then bring that to a place where there are multiple touch points throughout the year. So not just on an event by event basis, but come up with a strategy where, okay, here are the two flagships that you're gonna be doing in North America. But we also have you know, a future IT series where we get people in a different mindset and more on the cutting edge of things. Then there are dinners that we can curate either there on site or you know, one month before or one month after. So I think that's where partners, and that's like you said, there's a, there's a need out there. Yeah. They're just not thinking of us in that capacity because we just haven't presented it, but we are now. Yeah, and I know one of the challenges a lot of the marketers I work with is, some of these are, are siloed departments within their marketing org, right? You might have an events team, you have a, a content team, a lead gen team, and, and oftentimes they're looking to us to help, help them connect the dots. And, and right. I'll be humble, like I think that's been a failing of, of ours in terms of, we're selling them events, we're selling them leads, we're selling them content. We need to do a better job of coming to them with a cohesive strategy to bring this together. And so that's why I'm excited you're here because I think you're gonna help us do that moving forward. Yeah, and you know what's interesting too is like on the uh, event side, we can go have new conversations that then all of us can walk through that door together. And what I mean by that is, you know, sp- spending time with the corporate communications department, right? They are in tune with what that mission is, what the goal is, what the executive visibility success metrics need to be that year yep. um, so we can again help them fulfill their uh, you know their KPIs in that sense um, and the other side you know there are centers of excellence um, I've actually been challenging uh, you know the the events team around the world to go find those people right because they're thinking about things very differently and it's about getting their people their content out there and then they work with the marketers, right, who actually have some of the budget or Center of Excellence has the budget. We're trying to pull together experientially two or three different budgets, and I think we're only maybe tapping into one of them right now. Yeah. Um, And then to your other point, it was funny, I was uh, in Germany a few weeks ago. The sign for me of a successful meeting is when they're meeting each other. And it was really, I mean, it wasn't just intros for us, it was intros for them. And then through the, the spirit of the actual meeting itself, it went into information exchange and and brainstorming. Yeah, it's almost like you're sitting in on their internal. Exactly, pile, right? yeah. exactly. So I think that is another thing that I'm trying to bring to the table. It's like, let's not show up, laundry list of options, yeah. commoditize things. It's, we'll get to that and the pricing and all of that. Let's, let's talk about 
what is fundamentally going to be important to you. What are some of the make or break bets that you're making as a company? Is there a market segmentation that you know you haven't been paying enough attention to? How can we help you in that space? Um, so those have been, the, I think, the most rewarding calls. Is you have those discussions, and then they tell you, "Oh yeah, we've been, do, you know, we have a project with IDC. We've been working on for six months. Right. Hadn't thought about using a part of that content to tease out what we're going to do, or have it be the foundation of what our main stage experience is, or what our brand strategy session is." So we're helping them kind of plan um, and prepare to again make a the right impression. Uh, but also do it in a attendee rich experience, right? I think that's another key thing um, where, you know, the, the speakers, you know, need to be of the same caliber. So it is a peer to peer discussion. Is that a challenge you see where maybe sponsors aren't bringing the right speakers to these events? Yeah, I mean, it's something where we're starting to bring that up in the conversation, not mm -hmm. in, you know, round three or four. Yeah. Like, we are entering into that and, and stimulating that conversation pretty much in the first meeting. You know, identifying who those executives are. We have a pretty good idea because we've done our homework. So we'll kind of throw out some names yeah. um, and then kind of get that conversation going. And then, yeah, it's sign like, okay, who, who do we work with to make sure these dates are on their calendar? Right, and then you get into again the center of excellence, the corporate communications. Those are really high visible, high profile people. And then the other kind of backstop we build in is, if your CIO is not available, who's their proxy, right? Yeah. And you know maybe it's not the global CIO, but it's a pan regional CIO, or it's an in country CIO, um, or CSO, or chief AI officer. So we're walking out of these meetings with a sound understanding of not only what their priorities are, but who are the people that are going to deliver that message, and then kind of come up with an action plan because once that happens then the rest of it falls in line because now it becomes a senior executive's priority yeah. to be there and everyone else lines up and then so does the budget interestingly yeah. enough <laughs> now from a from a content rich experience what should marketers be thinking about as they prepare for something like a CIO 100 to make sure that they hit the mark they got the right speaker but they need the right content too so what are some pitfalls and what are some recommendations? Yeah, so we, um, we take a lot of pride in, in working with our sponsors to prepare. Um, I mean, we have at least two or three calls in the, pre, you know, in the preceding two or three months. Um, that's one thing where they have a clear understanding of the attendees that are going to be there. Um, so they know, you know, they know names, they know companies, they know titles. Um, and so we recommend to them and ask them, who are you sending? Right, so it's not only just your CIO or your CSO, but who are the other people, right? And then you've got field marketers, you've got regional you know, vice presidents of revenue, and we highly recommend that they kind of divide and conquer, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have an existing customer base? Great, your CIO probably should be spending you know, a majority of their time reassuring them or talking to them about something that's new or gonna be different and dynamic, and also this listening, right? These are great feedback forums. Um, and that's what really we, how we set up the brand strategy sessions of stimulating new conversations, but also hearing back of you know what they like and what they need more of or what they need you know less of. Um, the other thing that we like to do is then you know if you have a part of the team that's there to kind of help stimulate new business conversations, great, so that they divide and conquer because hmm. we take a lot of pride in not only setting things up and getting the content right, but then it's if these sponsors aren't sending the right people or aren't prepared to engage with people in that right way, right? We're in the exhibit hall here. This is great, but this can't be your only touch point, right? Your touch point needs to be on the main stage or it needs to be in the strategy sessions. The networking sessions, right? We had the welcome reception last night and I knew strategically certain sponsors wanted to meet certain people. Yeah. And I had about half, you know, five or six on my hit list a couple of people on my team, same thing. So we canvassed last night at least 30 connections wow. um, that were you know, kind of on the target account list, if you will, yeah. of our respective sponsors. And these are like C-level people oh, at yeah. large organizations. Yeah, right? these yeah. are CIO to CIO introductions, yeah. Yeah. Um, heads of Corpcom, things along those lines. And it was just great to facilitate the conversation. And then, you know, you, you stay there for a couple of minutes, and then you respectfully bow out because yeah. you're off to the off to the <laughs> next one. But you then you see them connecting with one another, yeah. and then I saw a few of them having breakfast this morning. So what was a two-minute intro last night 
then turned into an hour sit down today, and then obviously the next two days they'll have more time together as well. Love it, love it. So I, I want to ask you about where this is all going, and this could be specific to the CI 100 or just events at IDG in general or the events industry. You know, how do you see this evolving in such a way that not only benefits the, the audience, the CIOs, but also the marketers? Yeah. So I think we're working on some really big ideas. I mean, we you know want to stick to what is working really, really well. I think it's opening up, frankly, just some more inventory. Right, if that's you know starting a, a a day a half an hour early, so we can kind of get in some more you know sessions there. The before, during, after content arc is absolutely going to be something that we can and should be doing, mm -hmm. and helps distinguish our offerings um, because we have that data research expertise, the media and the lead gen expertise, and kind of wrap that around uh, you know events and that content experience. I think the next frontier is to kind of curate. That uh, those other audiences that are involved, so those other C-level executives. Um, I think the first foray will be to just get more of them here, um, and I think then the natural question becomes, all right, well, how do I get into a peer-to-peer -peer CEO environment or mm. a peer-to-peer -peer CFO environment and start going, you know, CMO, CHRO. We do it in pockets around the world when it comes to some of our curated, you know, dinner experiences, yeah. but we don't have, you know, per se in a flagship event uh, or a multi-day event. And I think that's what's something we're going to experiment with um, for the rest of this year and definitely into 2025 because that's a different approach, right? We have an audience that's core in the enterprise IT space. But we, I think we have earned the right now because that is still so fundamental to the rest of the C-suite to almost take what we're doing here and have CIOs and CSOs be cross-pollinating yeah. with a CFO audience, cross-pollinate with a CEO audience, a CMO audience. And I think, again, that is our arena of expertise. So it's kind of reimagining and re-engineering and kind of going in that other out direction to that C-suite uh, buying decision-making arena. Yeah, I mean, we see it digitally, right? I mean, a lot of the line of businesses come into our sites because they're involved in the tech purchase process. Yeah. Right, so it makes sense that that also is extrapolated to the event face-to-face -face arena yeah. as well. And I think we touched upon this earlier, but it's worth kind of deep going in a little deeper. We also just need to kind of get some of these incredible, you know, visionaries and thought leaders. I mean, uh, there's a particular a gentleman named Jared Isaacson um, had done some incredible work, um, you know, in the B2B space and tech space, but now he's you know manning SpaceX and taking you know, regular citizens going through a six month astronaut program, and now they're, you know, orbiting the earth. And how does that happen? <laughs> and, and, and has a lot of these leadership lessons. So again, rooted in deploying technology, but then also taking it from a leadership standpoint yeah. and, and empowering people and how you're leading teams. I think again, we do a great job around the technology side of it, but I think we can then earn the right of, okay, well then how do you use this technology from a leadership perspective, from an empowering, how do you increase the bandwidth of people, um, you know, across your customer base, but also your employees? Because um, that's what a lot of these technologies, you know, can and should do, and that's why they've been built. So I think we're just going to, again, editorially focus on bringing some more of those, you know, big names, so that like you remember where you were yeah. when you heard from. Yeah, someone like a Jared Isaacson. Well, that's exciting. Um, before I ask you my final question, I want to bring it back a little bit personal to you. No. You know, personally, what do you find most rewarding in terms of working in the event space? Yeah, it's honestly seeing these connections, right? I mean, I think the power of advertising is, is great because it gets you to a place where you're top of mind, you're trusted, you're on that short list of consideration. I think the event part brings in that human element and that's the only way of doing it. So that you can have those conversations, you could see the whites of their eyes, you could feel their, their frustrations or their challenges, and then ultimately work through with them to solve them, Yeah. right? I mean, I think that's, again, one of the biggest things. As soon as a, a enterprise IT decision is made and then implemented, you could argue, you know, the technology is already six months, eight months, maybe a year behind based upon what it's capable of doing and how you're actually using it. And I think I'm hearing more conversations of like, you're not just buying an enterprise IT decision, we're going to be there to support you every step of the way. Yeah. And, and from development to implementation to you know maintaining it, right? New employees are coming in all the time. How are they being onboarded and using you know 
premier technologies at their fingertips. And then frankly, for people that have been at the company for a long time, but aren't using all the tools you right. know, that can enable it. So that's what I find kind of the most attractive part is you just, you see people, you see the conversations, um, and it's, an, it's all about empowerment. And I think there's nothing more empowering than being there live, in person, or again, even through a virtual screen, but you're, you're going with a purpose to find out what you need to do and hopefully not repeat other people's mistakes yeah. and then get to a place where you have that momentum. And I think, again, that's where events can help shorten that decision-making process, then ultimately shorten the sales process you know, for our sponsors. But then these are big commitments financially, but also in human capital. And it's nowhere better to do it. I mean, like you said, at our, our onsite that we had, a lot of people hadn't seen each other in years. Yeah. And a lot of people were meeting each other for the first time. And now, and having personally done that, you know, now the conversations are just different. You know, if someone has an ask, you know that there is a way of helping them get there. Yeah. And I think that's the ultimate goal that we want to continue to do with our sponsors. No, I love that. I think the human element has been somewhat lost, especially on the digital side. You know, I've been working digital advertising for almost 20 years and it's so easy to get caught up in the reporting and the numbers and the impressions and the clicks and conversions. But I mean, these are people on the other end that are making purchase decisions where their jobs could be on the line. And yeah. that's why I love coming to events like this. I mean, you, you start to realize, you know, these people have faces, they have lives, they have families and, yeah. you know, making those connections well, really matters. Well, we, like, we kind of put a term to it. It's called the halo effect, right? I mean, you just, you see what you're getting into. You're creating this amplification opportunity around what needs to be done and the people and the content and the decisions that surround that. And again, that's something that's really tangible when you have it in, a, in an experiential component. Yeah. Etienne, last question for you, same question I ask everybody, okay. is just what advice would you like to leave people on the road? Yeah, so you know, I, I think the, the biggest thing I would say is have an intent. You know, if you're going to a meeting, you're doing something with your family, you know, just go in there with what you're looking to maximize the opportunity. Um, and I just think that's something that I was always instilled uh, by my, my high school coaches uh, in baseball. Of just, you, you wanna prepare, yeah. right? It's, it's kind of like these are on the field moments. You don't wanna just be trying to wing it. Like go in there with a purpose, have a plan, empower those people around you so you're not doing it all yourself. Um, and what's really fun about that is then the experiences themselves are often even more enriching than you prepared for. Right, because you went in there with uh, with some genuine intent. I love it. I love it. So, if people want to learn more about IDG events, where should they go? Yeah, um, IDG, you know, events .com. Um, We're actually overhauling some things. There's frankly too many places you can go uh, <laughs> to find our con uh, our content. Um, but yeah, it's you know we're, we're we're fundamentally kind of overhauling what that looks like as okay. we speak. Uh, but it should be done here in the next 30 days or so. Awesome, yeah. love it. Well, I'm excited for the rest of the show, and thanks for coming on the on the road. All right, thanks, Rick. Thanks, Etienne. All right.